hello. I think I just got a job offer, by the way, uh, with our next project. Thank you very much for that. We'll consider that for sure. Um, today we're supposed to talk about democratic process in Turkey and um, you know power to the people. It's ironic because I wanted to tell my friends about the event today, but Twitter was shut down. It's basically a faucet that uh, just is turned on and turned off every now and then. Um, and again, uh, as my background suggests, the longest time that I've ever spent was in management consultancy in tomato farming. So here I stand uh, as a tomato farmer turned management consultant talking to you about democracy. So what you're going to be hearing from me today uh, is not necessarily 100% correct definitions. It's ra rather three things. Uh, the first, my personal dreams about where we should be my personal observations around what are some of the mechanisms that should be functioning so that we can get there, and my personal story around what we did with Boat and Beyond uh, and, and how we tried to get there uh, using the butterfly effect. Um, my dreams around what we should be doing, and I'm sorry, I think it looks like I'm going to be stealing the quote of uh, Sevgi just previously, uh, but about 150 years ago, exactly 150 years ago, at the heat of the American Civil War, uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, defined democracy as of the people, by the people, and for the people. That to me is a very clear synthesis. I'm not in academia, so I don't do the longer paragraphs. That to me is a perfect synthesis of my dream of where we should be, right? It should be of the people, because there should be a great representation of all of us, right? I would like to vote for people. I would like to vote for political parties that excite me, that I respect. And when I go to the polling booth that day, I want to be putting down that stamp so strongly because I believe in those people and I love those people, right? So it should be off the people, it should be off me. Uh, it should be by the people because it should allow me to influence their policies. It should give me direct access to them and tell them what I think about what they do. And it should be for the people where the incentives and where the priorities of the people who govern us are indeed to create a better society instead of for personal gains and for sustainable structures in terms of winning elections, right? So these three things that are my personal dream uh, about where we should be. Now, my personal observations around what are some of the mechanisms that should be in place for my dreams to come true. Um, political parties need to be representing us. They need to make sure that all our voices are heard and those voices are heard in a very effective fashion with the necessities of the 21st century political party organizations. Legal structures, rule of law, need to be in place for us to re-believe in democracy and in institutions that this, it is possible. It is possible for political parties to operate. It is possible for individuals and institutions to be in the rightful place. Media needs to be independent. It needs to be detached for all other priorities, but truly and literally focus on the access of free and correct information to all of us, to us individuals, to the institutions, so that we can take the due actions with the benefit or with the beauty of uh, free access. Um, and the fourth thing, which is coming up in Turkey, it's not necessarily uh, at the level that it should be today, is the civil society. The civil society needs to understand its role, it needs to be able to act on its role, uh, so that the layers uh, or these rings of the, of the democracy in Turkey are indeed established. Each one of these four institutions or entities, so to say, have their own role and they need to act on these roles because the democracy in Turkey is only as strong as the weakest of these four. And so far, if we look back, if, you, if we retrospectively consider where we've come and where we are today, unfortunately, it looks like across the board, across all the three dimensions, all the four institutions, uh, we have a major way to go. Um, that's where I take issue with the title of this conference, right? It says, power to the people. In no society, in no sustainable way, power has been given to the people. It's always been taken by the people. And that's exactly the key takeaway of my lecture uh, today. It's never going to be given to us, right? So the dream, the first part, is never going to be given to us. We need to act to seize it. We need to act that the power is actually by the people received and applied as necessary. Coming to my third point around my personal story, around how I tried to change it uh, with a bunch of my friends. Um, I trust that you know the story of Boat and Beyond, but in a very uh, brief sense, what we tried to do, uh, starting back in December 2013, we identified an acute problem. We said, 
my entire, uh, my entire life long, before the elections and after the elections, there's always been talk around how the election day wasn't necessarily run as transparently, um, and there was always talk around manipulation and rigging election days. We basically said, well, this is an issue that is so important, so crucial, that it cannot be left alone and that the civil society needs to play a major role in this, right? We identified an acute problem. It was a short-term target. It was a short-term goal that we set for ourselves. And we said, okay, let's create a success story around it. And let's make sure that the people who want to be part of the solution have access to a channel in a clearly defined fashion that allowed them enough room and that allowed them enough flexibility with the capacity that they had, both from a time perspective and both from a capacity perspective, that they had the right channel to be part of the solution. So what we did is we said, okay, let's create an organization that is independent, that is completely transparent, and that's gonna ha answer one and one question only, which is, is the election day in Turkey indeed run in a transparent fashion? Are the rules and the regulation set forth by the Supreme Electoral Council really applied on election day? And do we, as the citizens of this country, have anything to worry about in terms of the outcomes and the processes of elections in Turkey? We covered two things. First of all, we trained volunteers to take part on election day in classrooms. Uh, so far, we've touched about 100,000 people who detached from political parties completely independently, uh, receiving the education, receiving the trainings uh, of Vote and Beyond. They took part on election days across three elections. You know, we are uh, in a very fruitful country as far as elections are concerned. In the two years that we've been working on, we um, observed four elections, and it sounds like the fifth one is on the way. So I wish we had invested in a different sector. I I'm sure we would have made a lot of money, um, but election observation doesn't quite give you that much. Uh, so we trained all these people and 100,000 people receive these trainings if they've become part of the solution. The second thing that we did, again, there was a lot of conversations around that there is some secret manipulation going on in the back in the government software. So we said, okay, that's a problem. That's something that we cannot observe, but let's focus on how we can come up with a solution to it. So we wrote on our own software and said that, okay, we'll do the aggregation ourselves. Bottom line, 99.9% .9 on a voluntary basis, we've come up with an organization of individuals who wanted to be part of the solution. And if we look back now on election day or the day after the elections on June 8th, we've achieved three things, right? One, to the extent that I remember, for the first time in my generation, people didn't talk about manipulations on election day. We started talking about results. We started talking about coalitions. We started talking about what the future of Turkey should look like or will look like, but we didn't talk about manipulation. And there is the impact, right? The second bit is, and I'm going to say this part in Turkish, yapınca oluyor mentality, which is when you do it, it actually works out mentality, was spread across 46 cities, 173 districts, and to 57,000 people who actually took part on election observation in Turkey as Vote and Beyond project. That is very key, because the third success of, what, of the Vote and Beyond project was um, that seeds of political engagement were finally planted in the people, right? From the cloud of dust of things that cannot be solved, it was election day, it was very complicated, and so far it hadn't worked. You know, they were stealing, and there was sacks are disappearing, and the votes are being burned. So from all that dust that was very difficult to touch and receive, we brought it down to a level where people could actually be part of the solution, and it worked out, right? And these seeds that if you stand up and beyond criticizing and beyond talking, you create structures that are easy to communicate, that are efficient, and that actually allow people to take part in the solution, it works out. And these are the seeds that I think uh, are gonna be replicated and are gonna grow in also different areas um, of our society. There's one small detail that I would like to share with you about our numbers, right? When Vote and, Vote and Beyond started, we had, within four months, we had 33,000 volunteers, right? And we were only active in Istanbul. The second election that we observed was in August 2015, and we had half the size, right? So we were from 33,000, we were down to almost 14,000 active volunteers. June 7th, we went up to 56,000 volunteers, right? Now, a lot of people think that June 7th was our gem. Right? That's, that's the real success story. To me, the real success story is the middle part, right? So the 14,000 people that in the middle of the summer, where there was no real competition, so to say, on the presidential elections, they still stood up and they still came out because they believed 
that solution was not a one-day thing, right? So you cannot solve things on, from day to night. If, if you give just your one day, you can't expect the results. I know we're impatient, right? So we're all in, impatient. We have uh, endless flow of information and we want to see the results right away. But these 14,000 people saw that the change, that the impact was a longer term thing and they stuck with us. That to me is the more important part of our experience. We are creating people, we're mobilizing people, we're impacting them in a way that is sustainable and that is going to be reflected in other parts um, of the society. What we need to do is we need to fly, we need to believe in the butterfly effect, right? I know that we all have our, our, our priorities. We take issues with the media, we take issues with the rule of law, and these are all very, very important, but at the same time, the bigger they get, the more complex they become. Now we, whenever we see something where there's an opportunity for change, whenever we believe that we can influence it, we have to act on it. No matter how slow the impact may appear, we have to believe in the butterfly impact. We have to believe in the possible and we have to act on the feasible. That is the story of what and beyond. So if you want to have our dreams come true about the Turkish democracy, if we want to see the power return to the people or grasped by the people, we have to be part of the solution and we have to make sure that we act and we need to go beyond criticizing and talking. Thank you very much for listening and I'm going to welcome all your questions at the Q&A session. <laughs>